Oh. Home tip! In 2018, YT's Jeff C CF Pro won our trail bike of the year, and for one very good reason. It was incredibly fun to ride, and I loved every minute on it, despite the fact that it wasn't actually perfect. 2019, YT have just released their latest version of the Jeff C CF. And as you'd expect, it's longer, slacker, lower, and it pedals better. So in theory, it's a better bike. But the proof, as always, is in the pudding. The range sees three carbon fibre models and one aluminium version. The aluminium one is a throwback to the last generation and hasn't been updated in the same way. The carbon ones come in two flavours, 27.5 and 29. The 29er version is the one which has seen the most radical changes in terms of geometry and it's this one that we've ridden and it's this one that I think most people will ride. Furthermore, within the three bike carbon fibre range, there's actually a difference in travel. The Pro Race version is the top end model and this gets an extra 10mm of travel front and rear thanks to longer forks and just a longer shock. It is the same frame though. So on the 29er, this makes it a 150 bike whereas a regular Jeff C is a 140 and on the 650B, it boosts it to 160mm of travel instead of 150mm. The 2018 version had a reach of 445mm in a size large, and this has now been boosted to 470mm. The seat angle has gone from 74.5 degrees up to a relatively steep 77 degrees, and the head angle slackens by a degree from 67 degrees to 66. Finally, the seat tube on a size large shortens by 45mm to 435mm. Now this means you can size up on a frame if you wish to in order to get that longer reach because the seat tube is that little bit shorter. It also means you could run, in theory, a longer post, maybe even a 170mm dropper. At the start of the World Cup downhill season, YT released their latest 2S downhill bike and this featured pivot bolts that were all accessible from the non-drive side of the bike. And this was to make the mechanic's life easier because they could strip down the whole bike from one side, save obviously for the horse linkage bolt on the drive side. YT clearly thought this was a good idea because the Jeff C now gets this as well. And it's one of a number of little frame features that I think are relatively smart. In addition to this, all of the outer cables are only held in one place on the frame, so it's internally rooted but it's clamped in one place, which should, in theory, make it easy to maintain and reduce some squeaks. And YT say, kind of in response to the UK market, they've made less shelving through the rear of the seat tube. Now, shelving means areas in which mud can collect, so they've made it a smoother run through, so less mud hopefully will end up trapped onto your frame. Save for the aluminium AL base model that remains from last year with some slight spec changes, there are three carbon models of the Jeff C. And despite having different wheel sizes, they basically share the same spec. The Jeff C 29 and 27 CF Pro Race comes in at £4,700 or $5,600. This is the longer travel version of the bike. You get a Fox 36 factory with a Grip 2 damper and a Fox Float DPX2 shock. E13 provide a lot of the kit on the bike, so you get their wheels, you get their tyres, you also interestingly get their cassette and their cranks. The cassette is a wide ranging 9-46 to tooth model and this is driven by a Shimano XTR rear mech chain and shifter. SRAM provide the brakes with the Guide RSC. The CF Pro version comes with the regular frame travel, so on a 29er, that's 140mm. This comes in at £3,499 or $4,299. This gets a RockShox Pike RCT3 fork and a RockShox Super Deluxe RT3 shock. So you're moving away from the Fox onto the RockShox. It also gets a SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain, so that's a 12-speed version. There's still plenty of E13 kit on there, including wheels and tyres, but you start to see some race face in the cockpit instead of rental on the pricier bike, and you get a slightly cheaper Guide RS brake. Finally, there's a CF Comp, which is the base model for the carbon frames. This comes in at £2,999 or $3,499. It's back to Fox with performance elite level kit. That's a 34 fork and a DPS shock. Drivetrain-wise, it's Shimano XT with the E13 cassette and cranks. You also get the E13 wheels and tyres. There's a SRAM Guidar brake and a rental cockpit finishing off all the kit. I rode the Jeff C29 CF Pro Race in southern Portugal back in December. 
and I came away very impressed with the bike because, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, technically, it's a better bike than its predecessor. YT have worked quite hard on the kinematic of the suspension. Included in this is an increase roughly of around 30% in its anti-squat. This means that the suspension is less likely to compress under pedaling forces, which means that it's going to climb better up those hills because the suspension isn't bombing around. Likewise, on flatter trails, when you're trying to attack it, it's just got a peppier ride. It's more eager to accelerate along the trail. One of the criticisms that many have had with the previous generation Jesse was that the tyres were pretty draggy, and that hasn't changed. But with the better pedalling performance, the bike doesn't feel quite as sluggish. Those tyres work well in a reasonably wide range of conditions, but they aren't perfect everywhere. The side knobs on the TRS Plus tyre on the front is quite malleable, so on harder terrain, it is prone to sort of wandering a little bit. But if the ground is soft, it can dig in and it adds loads of grip. Combine this with the longer geometry and slack ahead angle, and this thing really does start to rail around corners in a very confidence-inspiring way. Fox's latest Grip 2 damper is one of the best out there. We've always been impressed with it. So sticking this onto the front of the bike is no bad thing from YT. That increase in anti-squat also helps the bike when you're pushing through corners and trying to get some pop out of it. So it maintains its relatively lively feel. Get into a berm and there's a lot of confidence from that front end, but also you can really push the bike through any corners. Come to a jump and that longer bike means it's still very stable and confidence inspiring in the air. There may be a hint of kickback on some bigger square edged hits, but it's not something that I ever really found an issue with on my initial first few rides. It's fair to say that the changes that YT have made are ones that technically do make it a better bike. The geometry is longer, it's slacker, it's lower, and generally speaking, those are all things that we look for in a modern trail bike, especially as the previous generation arguably wasn't the most up to date. However, the thing that I really loved about the previous bike was that it was so much fun to ride. It was super poppy, super fun, really agile, despite its flaws. So YT have made a better bike. Part of me though still thinks that it might have lost a little bit of its character and I'm not sure if I prefer it or not. Fortunately, I'm in the middle of testing for Trail Bike of the Year and YT is sending us a bike. So I will be spending a fair bit of time on it before I make too many final conclusions about the bike. Initial impressions, very good. Maybe not quite as good as the previous one though. So that's the YT Jesse 29. Keep an eye out for our Bike of the Year review. And in the meantime, let us know what you think in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.